Hi everyone, I am Michelle and I'm here with CrossFit athlete Matt. Today we're gonna go through a yoga flow for CrossFitters to gain mobility. So when you're ready, grab your yoga mat, grab two blocks if you have them and meet me on your mat. So let's go and come into downward facing dog. So Matt's gonna place his hands at the top of the yoga mat, come onto the feet, nice. Hips are high to the sky, hands are about shoulder distance, fingertips are nice and wide, feet are about hip distance, and the heels are relaxed down towards the earth. Nice, big inhale, big exhale. And then from here, we're gonna run through a few sun salutations. So this is a flow that helps to um, generate heat inside the body, as well as gain some mobility and strength. So on the inhale, right leg comes high to the sky. Nice, exhale, take that right foot through to the inside of your right hand, low lunge. From here, this is a great opportunity to grab your yoga blocks if you need to. If those hips are a little bit tight, just place one hand underneath one block, other hand underneath the other block. And of course, you can use any height needed. So Matt has the third height here. You can come down to the second or even the, the flattest, the first level. Inhale, that chest comes up. Nice, exhale, releases the hips just slightly down towards the earth. Beautiful, when you're ready, take that left foot forward, see me with the right. Exhale, forward fold. Nice, inhale, come halfway. So hands come to the shins or the thighs. Elongate the spine, gaze stays down, core stays tight. Exhale, forward fold, right back down, beautiful. Take a big inhale, come all the way up. Fingertips come up towards the sky. Feet stay grounded, legs stay active, core stays active. Reach through the fingertips through the chest. Exhale, forward fold, take it right back down. Beautiful, fully engaged. When you're ready, take that left foot back to that low lunge where we started. You can place your hands back on your blocks if that helps. Once you're here, go ahead and remove the blocks off of your yoga mat. Hands come down to the yoga mat. Take that right foot back to meet your left. We're gonna come into a high plank. This resembles the top of a push-up. So shoulders are on top of the wrist. Heels are reaching towards the back of the room. Crown of the head is reaching forward. Core is nice and active. Nice, shoulders are nice and active. Take a big inhale. Exhale, come down to your Chaturanga Dandasana. This is your low plank. Elbows come straight back, core stays tight. Flip the toes, inhale, press up the chest towards the sky, cobra pose or up dog, beautiful. On your exhale, send it back, downward facing dog. Hips come high, yes, let it go. So now we're gonna go on to the left side. So inhale that left leg high to the sky. Take that left foot to meet your left hand for your low lunge. Grab those blocks again if you need. This side might be a little bit different. You might need a different height and that's fine. So adjust here. So again, take that left ankle underneath that left knee. So Matt, scoot that left foot forward, beautiful. Beautiful, chest up to the sky. Big inhale, exhale, nice. Inhale, take that right foot forward to meet the left. Exhale, forward fold again. Beautiful, inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine, keep that core tight. Exhale, release it back down. Ground down into the feet, inhale, come all the way up. Reach that chest up towards the sky, but keep the shoulders relaxed on the back body, nice. Lead with your heart, hinge at the hips, exhale, forward fold, take it back down. Beautiful, your hands to those blocks again if you would like. Take that right foot back, low lunge. Yes, spend one breath here if you would like. And then remove the blocks and we'll meet left foot back into that high plank again, that top of a push up. Beautiful, so fingertips spread super wide. Shoulders over wrist, core is active, shoulder is active. When he's ready, he's gonna exhale to come back down into his Chaturanga Dandasana when you're ready. Nice, press that chest up to the sky, take your up dog or your cobra for your back bend, your heart opener. Beautiful, then use that core to bring those hips up and back for your down dog. Exhale, go for it. Nice. So that was one round. So second round, we're gonna speed it up just a little bit. Big inhale through the nose. Big exhale. Nice, here we go, right leg comes high. Inhale, take that right foot forward, exhale. Again, if you'd like to grab those blocks, you can. We're gonna take a full breath here. Knee over ankle, chest to the sky, hips are opening, nice. Then take that left foot forward to meet the right. Exhale, forward fold, top of your yoga mat. Inhale, halfway lift, spine nice and long. Exhale, release it back down, forward fold. Big inhale, come all the way up. Yes, feet are grounded, shoulders are relaxed, core is engaged. Exhale, hinge it back down, forward fold. Hands to the blocks if you'd like, send that left leg back for your low lunge. Feel free to take one breath here. When you're ready, you can remove the blocks. Nice, Matt. Send it back, high plank. Take a full breath here again if you would like. On your exhale, 
Elbows come straight back, glue them in towards the side body, core stays tight, then send it up. That was an extra pause, because I know you CrossFitters like to hold really hard poses for a long time. <laughs> send it back, downward facing dog, nice job. Hips come high, send them back. Big inhale, big exhale. Down dog is a great posture to come back to your breath. When you're ready, inhale, left leg high to the sky, take it to the top for your low lunge. Use your blocks again if you would like. Take your quick inhale and your quick exhale. Yes. Take that right foot forward, exhale, forward fold, top of your mat. Halfway lift, big inhale, big exhale. All the way up. Nice, palms face each other, exhale, forward fold. Send that left leg back. Send that right leg back. High plank. Chaturanga Dandasana. Take your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. So down dog, again, is a great pose to come back to to find your breath and reset the body, reset the mind. Take as much time here as you'd like in your flow. But for now, we're going to drop down to our knees to come into tabletop pose. So one thing with tabletop pose, you want to make sure that the bones are stacked on top of bones. So shoulder on top of wrist, hips on top of knees. And if you are working on gaining some more mobility in your ankles, this pose is also wonderful. So right now, Matt has his toes tucked. He can flatten his feet as well for flexion or dorsiflexion in his ankles. So you can go both ways in this posture. So that adds a little bit extra to this pose. First thing we're gonna do here in our tabletop pose is open up the chest and open up the shoulders, that thoracic spine. So inhale, lift the chest, drop the belly. This is your cow pose. Matt's gonna gaze up towards the sky. Yes. Exhale, round the body, so pull that belly in. Yes, he's pushing the floor away from him, so he's really opening the back body. One more time, big inhale, lift up the chest, drop the belly, beautiful. Exhale, round the spine. Nice, so again, that helps to warm up the spine as well. Matt's gonna come back flat, beautiful. So this is still his active tabletop pose, so his shoulders are still active, and his core is still active as well. From here, we're gonna go into some hip movements. So take that right knee out to the side, Nice, maybe as high as the hip if you can get it there. Go ahead and start to find those big rotations in your knee. I don't care which way you go. Forward and back, we're gonna switch as well. So here again, we're just gaining a little bit more movement into the hip, opening up that joint. And then go ahead and switch direction. Sometimes you have to think about that, which is fine. And then when you're ready, right knee comes back down. And then go ahead for that left side. So again, whichever direction you'd like to go. Nice, that core stays tight here, those shoulders stay active as well. Switch the direction, take it back the other way. Beautiful, he'll come back. Meet us right in your tabletop pose. So again, bone on bone alignment, your shoulders are active and your core is active as well. Tabletop pose is a great opportunity to find some wrist opening and mobility in your wrist as well. So right now, fingers are facing away from your body. Go ahead and find some small movements in the wrist. So maybe left or right, whichever direction you wanna go. So circle around those wrists. Baby circles, switch direction. Yes. And then coming back to center, shoulders over wrist. Then we're gonna to start to open up the wrist. So first, take the fingertips towards the body. Palm stays flat on the yoga mat. Yes, thumbs are away from each other. So for a lot of us, this is enough. And again, we're opening up the wrist and this will come into your forearm as well. So his fingers are pressing down. If this is enough for him, maybe he can start to come back if that feels good in your body as well. So shifting the hips back towards the feet. If not, again, make sure the heel of the hand stays on the mat. Take one big inhale, one big exhale. Nice, and then fingertips come forward. Thumbs face each other. So now we're gonna go ahead and find the back of the palm on the yoga mat or the top of your hand. So flip it over. Thumbs face each other, fingertips face the body. Again, the back of the palm or the top of your hand is on the yoga mat. And then from here, you can take some wrist circles if that feels good, or if you wanna to start to press the wrist down into the yoga mat, and maybe start to send the hips back, making sure that wrist stays down. You're not gonna go very far. One big inhale, one big exhale. Yes. And then if you'd like to have a seat on your heels and maybe roll out the wrist or shake them out, you can, or you can come back into your tabletop pose, yogi's choice. Beautiful. From here, flip the toes, send the hips high, downward facing dog. So this posture we were in our sun salutations as well, and we're gonna go ahead and find it again. So for CrossFitters, this might be a very hard posture. It's known as a basic posture, but it's still very difficult. Again, hands are shoulder distance, fingers are spread super wide, and pressing down into those fingertips so you keep the pressure out of your wrist. We work really hard on those wrists, so let's keep them safe. 
Coming to the feet, your feet are about hip distance here. So Matt, go ahead and open up your feet a little bit wider. Nice. So not only does your downward dog help with your back body start to open, but it's gonna help with those ankles as well. So the ankle mobility, the ankle flexion that you need, maybe your overhead squat, this pose is gonna help that as well. One more breath, Matt, you've got it. Big inhale, big exhale. You're not alone if this pose is hard. Nice, right leg comes high to the sky. Big inhale, lift it up. Exhale, take that right foot to the outside of your right hand this time. Yes, so this resembles that low lunge that we did earlier in class, and this is great for your hip flexors. So hopefully your hip flexors feel a little bit more open. When you're ready, take that left foot to the outside of your left hand. Yes, coming into a malasana, or what we call a yogi squat. So this same pose, this same movement, is probably pretty common in your CrossFit workout. And again, this will help with your ankle flexion. So you see Matt here is able to get all of the heels flat on the yoga mat. If you don't have that mobility in your ankles yet, you can always roll up your mat and place them underneath your heels. Another modification for your malasana is to grab those blocks that you grabbed earlier or maybe a stack of books or whatever you have laying around. And you can actually put those blocks underneath your hips. So Matt, go ahead and show that. Go ahead and come up. And we'll stack these blocks on top of each other. Nice. And again, you can adjust this height however you need. Beautiful, so once you have your pose here, you have your modification of your malasana, elbows come to the insides of the knees, nice. Palms at heart center, pressing actively into each other. On your inhale, lift up your chest high to the sky, lengthen the spine, exhale, release those hips down to the ground, continuing to press the elbows into the knees, nice. One more big breath, inhale, beautiful. Exhale, release those hands down to the ground. Lift those hips high to the sky, turn those toes forward, coming into a forward fold. If you use the blocks or had your mat rolled up, go ahead and take those out of the way or unroll your yoga mat, nice. So from here, feet are about hip distance. If you ever need to judge that, place two fists together and put them in between your feet. And then we'll take a ragdoll pose. So we basically just take a hangout. So if your fingertips are on the ground, you can grab hands and elbows or invite the upper body to just hang and the fingertips dangle in space. One more big breath here. Again, opening up your back body, even relaxing your neck as well. Beautiful. Release the fingertips down to the mat. Big inhale again, come halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Big breath all the way up. Reach those fingertips up overhead. Exhale, take it back down, forward fold. Nice, from here, plant the palms to the mat, step the feet back for your downward facing dog, which we've gone over, so this is pretty familiar here. Yes. And then go ahead and drop the knees down to the mat. Send the hips back to meet the heels and reach the hands forward coming back into your child's pose. So chest stays low to the mat. Beautiful. If your hips are still super tight, you can always take this wide knee variation like Matt has, big toes touch. So if the hips are super tight, your knees are gonna stay wide, but we're gonna move into a puppy pose and that is a chest and shoulder opener. So I would invite you to bring the knees a little bit closer before we move forward. So if you can take the knees about hip distance, bring them a little bit closer, yes. And then take the gaze forward, keep the chest as low as you can to the mat and start to slide those fingers and chest forward until the hips stack right on top of the knees. Big inhale and exhale. Each exhale invites that chest to sink down and towards the yoga mat. Again, this can help to open up the shoulders and chest. If it's too intense, you can always take your palms to the outside of your yoga mat to create a big wide V. If maybe you'd like a little bit more intensity to those shoulders, you can take the thumbs closer together. So forehead to the mat, you can take a cheek to the earth, maybe your chin. One more breath here. Again, each exhale invites the chest to sink down towards the earth. Great. Then go ahead and send those fingers forward, slide all the way onto your belly. No fancy yoga move, just go for it. Yes. Flat on the mat, palms come underneath the shoulders, elbows straight back. Yes. Zip up those legs. And again, tops of the feet are pressing down. From here, we're gonna work into our cobra poses. This is a great chest opener again, but this also starts to work your thoracic spine and your back body. Palms will slide on the mat, fingertips spread super wide, hands are underneath the shoulders, so go ahead and slide your hands back a little bit, Matt. Yes, when you're ready, on your inhale, trying not to use your hands as much as possible, lift that chest up towards the sky. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze your elbows together. Yes, maybe lift those hands up off the ground, exhale, release, nice job. 
Two more of those. Big inhale, lift up that chest. Exhale, release. Last one. Big inhale, lift up that chest. Exhale, release. And this time we're going to hold it. So option to keep the palms flat on the mat and maybe press your chest up. Your elbows can stay bent or straight. That's your choice. When you are ready, activate that back body, lift up that chest, maybe press those hands into the ground and lift that chest up a little bit higher for three, two, yes. Exhale, release that chest down towards the ground. You can send the hands back to meet your hips and maybe rock those hips side to side, whatever feels good for to find a little bit of a release here. And then whenever you're ready, send those hands forward, press the hips back to come into that child pose that we were in just a moment ago. And this time, if it feels better to keep the knees open with your hips, go ahead and take that variation. Yes. And one modification here, if you notice that your hips are not on your heels and this is uncomfortable for you, you can always take a yoga blanket or even roll up another yoga mat and place it in between the heels and the hips to give your hips something to ground on. So you can use that anytime in your practice or anytime during your workout. In child's pose here, we're gonna find a couple shoulder openers. So right hand is going to come underneath your body and underneath your left arm towards the left side of your yoga mat. This is called thread the needle. So take that right hand towards the left side of your mat and between your body and your, and your left arm. Yes. Right shoulder stays down towards the ground. So we're opening up that outside of your right shoulder here. So he's going to relax. Exhale, release that right shoulder. Yes. This is your choice. This feels different in everyone's bodies. You can either invite that left shoulder to come down towards the ground, keeping that left arm extended forward, and that might fire up the outside of your right shoulder. Or you can take that left hand and take it around the low back. That might feel different and better for you. So this is kind of your choice. Big inhale, big exhale. Nice. If that left arm is not extended forward, go ahead and extend it back forward towards the top of your mat. Right arm extends forward, coming back into your child's pose. Take a big breath here to reset. And then we'll go right to the left side. So left arm comes underneath the body, between your body and your right arm, beautiful. So whichever variation you chose on the other side, go ahead and take that variation here, whichever felt better for you. Nice, maybe two breaths. Again, each exhale invites your body to relax and open. That's really important in your practice here in this flow in these poses, is to invite your body to open. And your breath is a great way to do that. Right arm comes forward again if it's not already. Left arm extends forward. Big exhale, release those hips down to the ground. Yes. So again, your breath is a great place to release and to open up. So exhale, relax the chest. Exhale, relax your hips. Forehead to the mat. I invite you to stay in this pose for at least five more breaths if you have the time. This flow is great for your post-WAD or your active recovery day, so I invite you to continue to come back and check this flow out. Thanks so much for working out with us.